at 6 o'clock. We'll call this meeting to order. If you would stand for our pledge and moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. have a motion that we approve our minutes from our March 18th regular board meeting. So moved. We have a motion. I will second that motion. Uh, is there any discussion concerning those minutes? Not hearing any or seeing any. All in favor of approving the minutes from March 18th, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Next up is uh, approving tonight's agenda. Do we have a motion that we approve tonight's agenda as presented? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, and you showed me where the field of play <coughs> would be for softball. Mm -hmm. I'd like to move it to an action item. <coughs> and I will speak to it when we, um, when we come to it. Okay. We have a motion on the floor to amend the agenda to uh, move the softball uh, playing field to an action item. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? You want to speak um, on that? Yes, sir. I'll speak. Um, this has been a quite a, a process, and I think there's some misunderstanding in how a process works sometimes. Um, I'm absolutely devoted to softball. I'm a softball mom. And I sat on that hill for four years and two at the um, elementary, and I do it all over again. We never missed a meeting. And I will say this, the coldest I've ever been is not at a football game, it has been at a softball game. Um, the dedication was absolutely fantastic. And it was so well planned, and I, I deeply apologize to you and anyone who's watching. I was with my daughter in Texas, so I couldn't be here. But thanks to you, Michael, I got to participate and watch and yell and carry on. Now. My, um, the reason I put it as an action item, and we'll have to go back, Dr. Sprouse, because um, also the lights are on. I've never been against the lights. I've never seen anything in writing that they're um, all um, rotten, but I believe you. If that's what you say, then I believe you. And I just wanted to get a, some additional idea. Was that a, I know it's a state contract, but is that a good quote? Could, if we go from 189 to 145, could we go lower? We got a South Carolina vote and said, hey, we can get 145 out of North Carolina. Can you beat that? So that's the way I think, and that's the way I ran my company when I had one. So I like lights. I want my girls to see, but I also don't want them to get hurt. And that field of play by a professional environmental landscape this original quote was made in 2021. And that's how long we've been talking about a field of play for my women on that field. Now, the very first, and I believe, and I, I do, I read everything I receive from the administration, and I do ponder. It's not that I don't trust. I have to dig a, a little bit. And 
Dr. Sprouse had a, a paragraph that really got my attention, and I agree with it. Once we are ever notified that we have a certified safety issue and we fail to act, colleges are the same way. You, you will lose in court every time for a lack of due diligence. And I'm not going there, and I wouldn't go there if I, if I had to. So my proposal for the action item is that we do the lights and the field of play for softball together. And I want this project to finish. We can start that immediately. Well, it'll probably take like six to eight weeks to get here. I don't know what Michael's schedule is, but um, that would be sort of a phase two. Phase three, we want to fix the fence. There's holes in it. Um, Jason, you know, you know too. <laughs> and I want to look at our bathrooms. They need a good, solid scrubbing, cleaning, painting, I'm not sure, changing out some um, facilities. I don't think it'll be extraordinary. I've looked at it, I've said, you know, I, I don't think that's gonna, none of this is gonna break the bank. Um, and um, coach, you is there some talk that you need a building to put your things in? The, the current building we have is a wooden shed. Yep. And, and I don't know how long it's been there, Mr. Bill, but it's, it's to the point, it's, it's getting rotten at the very bottom. Uh, it's just got two by fours of plywood. It, it, it was before 221 yeah. because I know that shed, yeah. you know. And so. I can pull, and I, I showed uh, there I, I could pull some two by fours, just pull them and you see? They, they come. And you you can push yeah. it over pretty much. So my, my feeling is that we can pick that up as a phase three as we go into 24, 25. And by the beginning date of your opening game, it will be done. Now, no one at this table cares about getting credit for anything. We're gonna be forgotten, and that's the way it should be, because we are the least important people in this negotiation. But when they walk on that field, the name they're gonna remember is Mickey Davis. And I hope we keep her memory always before us as goals to aspire to, because she's an amazing woman. And I think you made a really enormous choice in dedicating that field to her. Um, when my father-in-law coached here, um, bas women's basketball, <laughs> he said they even tried to get her to play on the football team. She could have beat anything out there, but he and the head coach did not get their way. So I, I want parents to know that we're committed to you um, we're committed to safety, and this is a safety issue why it needs to be addressed. Now, this is how Mr. Uh, Pitts, and I've got a lot of respect for Michael and David Pitts. I think they're wonderful people, and they're very competent. If he was here, he would tell you the colleges that they work on. And David really does the majority of those, uh, um, but Michael owns the company. Now, this is his first paragraph, immediate action, safety and liability and he lists exactly what we need to do. Now the original quote, um, he made a mistake on this one and we, we, we went back and we discussed things, but I think the original quote was 12,280. And in, since 2021, it, it went up 1,000 to 13,480 because he's gonna add a, um, he's gonna add something on third base, it's called a swale. To, to take, keep the water from running off, because that field pools, as you well know, out in the outfield, and it's really awful. So that's why I'd like to have it as an action item. And um, for you softball parents and you softball players, I thank you for your, your patience as we all work through the process of reaching a consensus. People have different points of view, but it does not mean we have any ounce of or lack of respect for anyone in this room. We're professionals and we just talk it out. We don't always agree, but we go home happy. And if you don't, um, I can make you some good decaf about seven o'clock. I'm willing to answer any questions you might have as to what my reasoning is. Thank you, I'm, I yield the floor, Mr. Chairman. Any, any other discussion concerning amending the agenda to moving the softball field of play down to an action item. There's the issue of procurement and getting estimates. Is that a state contract price? Hmm? 
Is that on state contract? You don't have to put it out for bids if it's on state contract. I can double check that. Um, I'm very, I, and you know what, that's a very good point. I'm very prejudiced toward local people. They have a national reputation. I agree, and I would love for them to have it, but, yeah. but if it's not state contract, then we're required to put it out for bid. And we will do that, but I'm going to vote on the fact that we will do it tonight. <laughs> because that that's the, what has gotten out in town, that we, we're not interested in finishing this project, and we are. And we're going to go after it. So, but we can amend this motion and we'll find out. Um, but I'm committed to the completion of this program and getting you the field you need and for the girls. And I assume, um, Coach, I didn't talk about this to you because I'm not one that probably moseys up and says, how's the equipment? Um, but are you bats and things of that nature, you're in good shape or you're not in good shape? Okay. There's always some things you could always use. Uh, we, we will, we hadn't bought bats in a few years, and we were fortunate. The Athletic Association this year bought us three brand new bats. That's great. Uh, and it makes a difference. People, uh, bats over time get dead. Um, I didn't realize that until last year, to be honest with you. We we were using our old bats. They're doing okay. And, and, and one, one of the girls bought a new bat. And, and you can see the ball, how it jumped off that new bat versus <laughs> The old bats. Um, Women are very territorial over their bats. When <laughs> my daughter married, she said, you can do whatever you want with this room. But there's one thing, and she opened that second closet. Please don't ever touch this bag, those bats, my glove, and that ball. And the first time she came home, hugged and kissed her dad, went straight upstairs, and I said, she thinks I got rid of that bag. <laughs> <laughs> and it's right where she left it. So I think I take that as an, uh, with appreciative information. I'll discuss with Michael. He was hoping he would be in town, and um, we'll see what we have to do. And I'm more than happy to, but at this point, I guess I'm asking for a quote of 13480 uh, to move forward, and if we have to adjust it, we will. Is there any other discussion concerning moving the field of play to an action item? Well, speaking on what Ms. Sprouse said about the three quotes or two quotes or open it up or whatever, I understand a company out of North Carolina can do it for a certain price, but we've got three in South Carolina companies. I'm not against doing the lights, but there's three companies here in South Carolina, one in Irmo, one in uh, Newberry, and one up in Seneca. And I'm not against it, so I don't want nobody to think I'm against the lights. But, I mean, I think we should look in our own state, too, besides just looking at a company that we're currently looking at. I mean... That's my take on it. Okay, and, and thank you for that. We'll, right now, let's... Uh, well, I was just discussing it because she made a yeah, statement about right, opening it up, and yeah. I just yeah. feel like yeah. we'll, uh, that's where I'm at. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your input. Um, so, is no further discussion on moving the softball field of play to an action item. Not hearing any all in favor of it amending the agenda to move the softball field of play down to an action item, please raise your right hand. All right. Four, and I'm just abstaining on that one. Just do it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> four, zero, four, zero. Uh, so we'll move softball field of play down to the last action item. All right. Uh, so we do have an approved agenda now, and Ms. Brown, I'll turn over you for Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, this is always my favorite part of the meeting. Um, not that others are not my favorite part, but <laughs> anyway. Standing ovation. We have been able last week, last month, to recognize an outstanding teacher. Of course, we have many outstanding teachers. We have the most dedicated, I, I would put our employees second to none. They're, they're dedicated, they're here because they love our children and they want the best for them. So um, kudos to all. But there's certain times that we get a chance that we have uh, outside people who also affirm our uh, what we already know. And as a matter of fact, this past month we had that very thing happen when the Index Journal sponsored their uh, Reader's Choice Awards and someone nominated our Westville's primary school nurse, Heather Case, for Reader's Choice Best School Nurse. Um, we also had a nominee from Band Director, which is great to be nominated. Um, but we got word this past week that Miss Case was the Reader's Choice Award, and so they sent her a nice certificate, and so she gets to go some sort of little 
free free thing this week, I think. <laughs> <laughs> they used to pay for headquarters. <laughs> but uh, we just appreciate her. This is her first year at Ware Shoals Primary. She is, has proven herself time and time again to be uh, top notch. She is top drawer, top shelf, whatever you want to say. She is the best of the best, and we love her and thank her, and we want to keep this day. person in here just got a, a nominated and voted on Saturday that he is softball coach of the year. Oh, All right. right. Get your playoff tickets. <laughs> I, I will say this, Dr. Sprouse. I, I'm modest and I told him I wasn't free. You know, didn't deserve it because we're going to probably finish third. But one of the things the coaches said, they could see all the improvements that are going forward, and they thought that was a, a big indicator, and that's what they, they complimented me on. So I'm going to pass that on to you all also. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate what you do for other girls. Thank you, Tom. And one more. If yes, I may, I want to publicly thank Mr. Dickerson for his care of the primary school grounds. He has brought his pressure washer down and he's been pressure washing the front of that school and the audience <laughs> underneath the audience, I'm like I couldn't I believe in beauty and improvement that has never been done there and he is doing that in his spare time which I promise you is not very much but uh, thank you very much for your care for our school your school and for the children and your babies as you call it and uh, you've made a a heck of a difference there, and sure. uh, thank you so much. Yes, sir. You, you weren't you. on the tricycle doing that, were you? No, ma'am. <laughs> Did more the, uh, the pressure washer from Mr. Chad. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's a blessing to be there. Lots of good things going on. Indeed. All right. Next up is our uh, academics focus. Thank y'all. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Mr. Armstrong is going to pull up the handouts that you received um, this, this is last week. Uh, but MAP is the formative assessment that is state required. We give to students in kindergarten through eighth grade. Yeah. It's given three times a year, and it's to measure academic progress. And so the handouts you received look at district level data. But before we start there, I just want to tell you a little bit about <coughs> what the students and teachers receive. I think that's important for you to know, too. Students and parents all receive an individualized report that shows the very first MAP test a student has taken to the very last test. So they can look at their child's progress three times a school year for as many years as they've taken MAP with us and to see that they've grown. And RIT scores is what students receive. Um, those scores progress over time. So if you score a 180 in the fall and a 185, then at the end of the year in the spring, and then the next fall, you've scored a 190. You can see there's that track upwards. They all correlate based on grade level. So there's not a change based on from second to third grade. We just want to see those RIT scores moving up. So students and parents receive that report. Teachers receive probably more reports than what they would like, if we're honest. Um, we give them a lot of data, um, but we do take time to meet with them either as grade level or department and review that data. They also receive training each school year regarding the reports they'll receive. But they receive class reports that help them to look at growth over time. They also have a learning continuum that they have access to, which will show them specific students in their RIT bands and then skills that they need to work on so that they can target to move to the next RIT band. So teachers are able to use that when they work on small groups and individually with students to make um, improvements in our instruction. And administrators also receive a myriad of reports. <laughs> um, they receive all those reports that students, parents, and teachers receive, and then these district level reports we'll talk about tonight. 
We're going to focus on student growth and then projected growth. Those are two separate things. So student growth is when we look at a student's scores and we see whether they're performing below, on, or above level, are they making progress? So this is their opportunity to show their teachers, their parents, their administrators, that each test that they take, they're learning more, they're gaining more knowledge, they're making improvements. And so it doesn't matter if your child's below grade level or above or on. Here we're looking to see was their growth. And so we received these reports. Um, you notice I highlighted in red for you at the top, this is a fall to winter report. So this is after they've taken the test two times this school year. And we can see for each grade level, which grade levels have met their projected growth. Most students are expected to grow between five to seven RIT each time they take a test. And so this report uses an algorithm and it looks at the percentage of students who have met that target mm -hmm. from fall to winter. It looks at the number of students in the grade level yeah. and then it also creates a school conditional growth. So it compares all of the grade levels in the school to then create that number to know is every grade level making adequate progress. So this report shows us that for math, and I put those boxes at the bottom so you could see, third, fourth, and fifth grade in winter had met their target grade. And you can see all of the grade levels except for seventh there were pretty close. If we look at the next report, this is our page two. <laughs> This is fall to spring. So now you can see kindergarten, second, third, fourth met those projected grades in math. And again, all grade levels, <clears throat> sorry, except for second, seventh, are pretty close to meeting that. So this report is showing us that students are making adequate gains from fall to winter and then from fall to spring in math. Now let's look at reading. One more, Mr. Armstrong. <clears throat> so in reading, again, this is fall to winter scores. And you can see 4th, 5th, 7th, and 8th met those targets. And all of the grade levels except for 3rd are close here in meeting the fall to winter. And then let's look one more at fall to spring. And we picked up some additional grade levels now. For spring reading, we have kindergarten, 2nd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and 8th. And again, most of the grade levels there except for 7th. So consistently across the board, we're seeing student growth. No matter where they started in the fall, at springtime, the majority of our students are meeting their projected goals, which is somewhere between seven to 12 RIT from fall to spring. All right, yes ma'am. And now the next thing we're gonna look at is projected proficiency. So now this is, are you working on grade level? Mm -hmm. So there's a linking study between math and SC ready. The last linking study was done in spring of 2022. Wow. It took 80,000 test scores between MAP and SC Ready students in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And then there were about 253 schools that participated. Our district did participate in that study. Yeah. So they take all those scores and they're able to correlate the RIT score to a does not meet and approaches a meets or exceeds. Right. Those are the proficiency levels on SC Ready. And wow. a perfect correlation would be a score of 1.0. MAPS correlations are 0 0.84 to 0 0.87. So it's considered a high correlation in between MAP scores and SC Ready scores. Yeah. Now because we take spring MAP in March, we have about five weeks left of instruction after this assessment was given. So we believe the projected proficiency should go up from this number that you see here. And so I added this in for you at the bottom because this report always includes second grade, but they don't test for SC ready. This is a projection if they were to take it, yeah. how would they do? Okay, so just third through eighth grade for math, we have 38.1% that would be either meets or exceeds. Mm -hmm. And I looked at last year's SC ready scores and we had 34.3% who score meets or exceeds. So if we meet our projections, or if our, we do a little bit better than projections, hopefully, you know, we're gonna see an increase of about 3.8% in students who score meets or exceeds in grades three through eight for math. Can we look at reading now? 
great. All right, and then here for reading, same thing. I created that projection for you at the bottom of our movie, second grade. So we have about 48.4% who are projected to score meets or exceeds right now. Last school year, our percentage was 46.3%. So we'll have an increase of about 2% or hopefully more. Now, are these numbers exactly where we want to be? No, right? But we are showing a gradual increase in our scores. We are showing from that previous reports that you looked at that student progress is there. So even though we have some students who are not meeting these grade level expectations, they're growing throughout the school year. Paula, can you correlate some of those numbers too to the, co the two, what I call the back-to-back -back COVID years? Oh, I mean, absolutely, yes, there was. Um, I, mean, I won't I say a learning loss, but yeah, they're, I mean, they're I, just- It would have been zero. Right, and so we're still working towards- But, but you're, that's progress. Making progress, yes, and our teachers, our staff, I our mean, administrators work very hard yes. to kind of fill in those gaps that we found, especially those, that learning continuum and those individual student reports, they will pour over those yeah. and group students and decide what skills they need to work on and target that instruction. Yeah, they're doing a great job. And we'll get there. We're going to keep working hard. I sure appreciate what you do. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? I have one. Sure. I, I know we're throwing the COVID in there, too, because that's still a factor. But what about since we've changed our school schedule and coming back shorter? Have you seen a, a less drop-off, I guess, in some scores since we're coming back a little quicker in the summertime? Sure. I would say um, that if you look at our trend data, our fall scores are still about the same mm -hmm. as what they normally be. Our winter scores have increased some, and I think it is because we have that opportunity for remediation. Right. And also, yeah. Yeah. we're getting those scores in too before we go out for our winter break. Right. As in previous years, we might have had to give that after winter break. There is a certain number of instructional weeks that have to occur before you can give this assessment fall, winter, and then spring. Mm -hmm. And so in the past, sometimes we had to wait until after a break to give the assessment, whereas now we can do it earlier. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Moving on down our uh, <coughs> agenda. Uh, Coach Roper, uh, athletics focus. Mr. McDill kind of stole all my thoughts. <laughs> 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 uh, kind of got me off track. So I don't know how to go. You're uh, dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to talk about some athletic needs, kind of, kind of where we are. Uh, first, first, first thing I'd like to talk about is the athletic training. Uh, I know it was brought up in the last board meeting. Nurse McClain did an outstanding job on the presentation. Uh, there, there's a couple of things that, that I would like to include uh, as the athletic director and a coach. Uh, one, the, just, just the ability of it taking the medical responsibility off of us. We had a situation this past weekend uh, on baseball field where a kid uh, went to catch a fly ball and it absolutely crushed his nose. You know, at that point, uh, we obviously know, you know, he's hurt. You know, but you know, we got parents trying to get him back on the field. We don't know if he's got a concussion. Uh, on the coaching side, you know, all we do is is watch a few videos and, and take take. Test at the end. So uh, the medical side is, is a huge bonus. Um, the the, the pre-game, post-game, and in-between game uh, recovery. Uh, we're, we're not. We're, we've been around sports, but we're not licensed and, you know, to, to, to do that. And, uh, that's a huge benefit because we expect a lot out of our student athletes. We, we should give them the, the opportunity to be as healthy as possible. Um, we've got multiple incidences that, that happen throughout the year, uh, kind of on the bullet points here. Uh, I, don't, I won't go through all of them, but the, the first incident happened as, fir as soon as the first football game. Uh, we have a doctor that is on the sidelines during football, but it's not just football that we get hurt in. Uh, we've got Multiple injuries has happened on the softball field, the baseball field, the soccer field, basketball court, and they'll be there. You know, they'll be there all the time. So, um, the, the next point is, is Dr. Rittenberg uh, has 
included a statement I think you all have uh, about his support and the importance of having the train wreck. So um, that's that's kind of my side of the on the athletic side of the benefits of the train wreck. If I could speak to Coach just for a minute, I think you're 150 percent correct. And when that was tabled, I just wanted inside information. I'd heard two really good presentations by PlaySafe. And what I wanted to know and what I was asked is how do we pay? And so um, I knew that it was a three-tiered system, but I, I, I just couldn't remember from the last time I heard that presentation how it went. And, um, but I talked with Ann Chiaffi, and you know, you've got the, the man there, the outreach director. He's, he's very energetic and very informative. But I think it's absolutely, it isn't a luxury anymore. I mean, 10 years ago, it was sort of like getting a, well, let me go back <coughs> 20 years ago, it was sort of like getting a cell phone. You know, but these, they're absolutely um, a, a huge safety component. Now, they told me that we would have to have a small whirlpool. Do we have a whirlpool here? Well, we um, we don't know everything. That yeah, we well, that's, to, that's one of the things I, right. I asked um, about. We would have to discuss that, and we're going to get in with... Um, well, they demand it. And so, I mean, I'm just mentioning it. I said, what what is your expectation of us? She said, well, I'll tell you, because I said, are there hidden costs? I mean, we're told that it's... 35,000, but you know and I know that it's not that, well, we, but, yeah, we but it's, not a, it's not a big deal. Right. But a small whirlpool, and I think that's what any athletic program should have, um, access to a water and ice, mm -hmm. a locked room, cabinets with a lock. And she asked me, do I have such a facility? And I said, I'm sure that you have to direct your those questions, but she said, we're not trying to hide that but they're part of the upkeep of the program. We have been, we actually have been discussing that in the event that, you know, it was voted on and it mm -hmm. did pass, and we do get an athletic uh, trainer. You know, where would we place them? Because um, that, and they stay for the whole, I mean, they stay till the last person leaves. They're here, they come in at one o'clock or one to one thirty every day, mm -hmm. um, and they're here till the last person leaves yeah. from, the, from the game. And then the weekends also, if we have like tournaments, they're here for those. Well, right after you did your presentation, and I got a hold of our outreach director, and I wrote um, Miss uh, Sprouse an email saying I'm 100% behind it and it's a necessity. I just wanted the guts of the program as terms that when people ask me, what do they mean the community? Does that mean that our businesses have to do um, something? And I said no. Now their, their grant has gone away, but they're reapplying this year. Right, and and they do reach out to the businesses in the area because he he asked me, mm -hmm. you know, what type of businesses do we have in the area, and I, you know, I yep. told him some of the the ones that we have. Um, so they do reach out to those businesses, mm -hmm. and Dr. Ringenberg also, mm -hmm. self regional helps will help write grants and things to you know to make this a. Reality. And that was the most wonderful part because she said some hospitals are withdrawing the middle portion and they pay the biggest chunk of it, but self is so, they're so strong. She said we haven't seen any indication that that would ever happen um, and, or, and pending. So I'm glad it's important to you because I think it speaks to your care of, and certainly Ms. Kennedy put up with us for a lot of years, um, for the care and safety of our kids. And when will you find out about your player? Uh, he's our, like Is he I said, he went to the hospital, he did break his nose, and the kid wanted to come back and yeah. play. I mean, it speaks to the volume of his <coughs> toughness, which is mm -hmm. a trait that's hard to, to, to teach. Yeah. Uh, but obviously we wouldn't let I'm him glad he's okay. Him, so, yeah. but, uh, I'll say this, I mean, from the time that it happened, from the time the trainer got there, it was before he got off. It was, it was impressive to see to see that. Play. It's pretty scary though, too, isn't it? I mean, well, you see one year old. The, uh, not to be too graphic, but the sound is, mm -hmm. is still in my head, and it's, yeah. it was pretty rough. So. Okay. Yeah. Trainer. Uh, 
softball field, like I say, she, she touched on a lot of the topics. Um, the, the lighting, we understand the severity of the poles. Um, the test that was, that was done, this, this is an important factor. Uh, it, it's insufficient. Our, our outfield play, uh, our infield play, um, it's called what, foot candles or something. Uh, we're, we're insufficient in both areas. Uh, so we, we it, it needs attention. Um, I'm gonna move on now to, to another topic on the football side. Um, Coach Walker has, has really helped me a lot on the football side. Um, the, the helmets, we have 27 helmets going out of date in 2025. Yeah. And that's, that's quite an expense. It so, sure is. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at $500 a helmet. Do you think you can split that? Yeah, so, so what, what I'm proposing, uh, figuring out with Coach Dotson, out of those 27, how many do we have to fill? Yeah. How many do we need to replace? But moving forward, putting a plan in place so that we don't run into another issue of 27 helmets going out. Because 2016 puts us in a little bit less uh, than 27, but still a good many. So my, my proposal uh, is, is budgeting five varsity helmets, five C team helmets each year moving forward to, so that we don't we don't uh, get in a, into that situation. Now we still have to recondition helmets every two years and shoulder pads. Um, once again, my, my suggestion is, is two varsity shoulder pads, two C team shoulder pads, recondition half each year. So we, we're, we're, not, we're not reconditioning more than 30. 35 is 70 is the number that we, we need to stay in. And coach, you don't have a choice on that. I mean that. You don't. No, I mean. Yeah, I mean you you have to. It, it's not. You can't really look at it as all right. We got 16 players, yeah. 18 players. It's yeah. how many players is going to be coming out? You know, uh, and, and we, we don't want to keep people from coming out and say we don't have a helmet for you. But you know, I, I don't know what the magic number is, but uh, with Coach Dawson's help, I think. I've got a, a sheet that, that's in your in your packet that I kind of did a little bit early on in, in the process of uh, me taking over as, as the athletic director. It's, it's kind of a potential reoccurring cost per sport breakdown. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, this this list was done at an early stage. There are some things that I have seen moving throughout the year uh, that may be additives to it. Um, but just, just to give you an idea uh, of kind of what I was looking at, you, you've got kind of a breakdown. I don't know what number that is. But, uh. Now, is that a quick question I've got. Um, you say C-team helmets versus varsity helmet. Is what I mean, what's the, is that a major difference? And if there is, what's the price difference? So. I, I, I don't, I don't want to say that I know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I would imagine the varsity helmets are going to be a higher grade. Like, you know, Coach Dawson likes, I think it's Rydell. Mm -hmm. You may be able to, to use a Schutt helmet of a, a little bit less cost than a, than a Rydell helmet. Um, but I, I think that was probably the major. The safety rating is still going to be, you know, acceptable through high school league. So just a little bit of a cost of well, I, me personally, I, I'm speaking for me, I'd like to see maybe all of them be the same. I mean, the, the C team kids is getting hit just as hard almost as varsity. I mean, some of them kids out there. Yeah, they don't make them small enough. And that's why I say, you know, I would, one thing I'd like to see, I mean, I don't know how you go about it, but I'd like to see helmets the same across the board. I mean. Yeah, well, let's just look at it hypothetically. Let's say a varsity helmet's $500 and a C team helmet's 350 Why not spend a little bit more and get higher? Yeah. That's where I'm at. I think get get all the helmets the same that way. Yeah. And if you if you get them the same and you run into an issue where you need some, you can switch them from C team up to varsity. So yeah. Yeah. that's something I like to see personally. But thank you. That's, that's the sheet that he's talking about the potential reoccurring. Yeah. That's okay. amazing. Um, next thing is is Coach Dawson kind of got with him early on, and, and 
and he submitted kind of a yearly needs list. It's also in your in your uh, in your packet. Now we don't have a cost breakdown, but you you, you will see kind of a, a supply. Kind of what we're looking at as far as mouthpieces stuff you don't really think about a whole lot, chin straps, etc. Um, um, but, but it's in your packet as well. Um, the biggest thing is is field paint. Uh, I mean, you're looking at looking at ten thousand uh, dollars, and I think we ordered fifty cases of white, twelve purple, black, and Vegas. I did an inventory the other day. We still have baseball, softball, and soccer games still to go, and we were down to 16 cases of white to try to make it through the rest of the season. We're down to four cases of black, Vegas, and purple. So my recommendation was to up the, the, the quantity of white because that's the most used. But uh, you, you, did we submit that? Uh, yeah. Anyway, you, you've got you've got what it looks like. That, yeah, that's, absolutely. That's what it looks like. Okay. Um, next is is kind of more more of some. I don't know if we can say long term goals, but but athletic update goals. Um, you've already touched on Mr. McDill uh, updating the bathrooms at the softball field, but I don't know if you you've been in the, the field house bathroom. Baseball stadium, football stadium, soccer stadium, bathrooms. Yep. You know, I think and you know, Coach, where they direct people is they direct them to go back into the gym, yep. but they don't go downstairs. Someone call me at home. They go into the coach's bathroom. Yep. And I said, what are you doing in there? You know, that... The did, huh? It's the handicapped person. Well, these weren't handicapped people. And so um, I said, you should have gone downstairs. Because I mean, the gym looks really good, <laughs> but I, I agree with you, and that is a long-term goal, and it really you were singing to the choir. Yeah, I think for baseball, the, the short-term answer is, is add a hand, handicap portable that would um, be good. back in the work at the Rock Build, kind of get back into that. Yeah. Um, softball bathrooms, field house bathrooms. You touched on the fencing. Uh, I don't know if, if we've got two quotes in hand already for the fencing uh, at the softball field. Um, field resurfacing, uh, we have a quote for the softball, um, and we can get additional quotes, just throwing that out there. Now, baseball, I'm going to touch on this because we, we've got quite um, a difference in dirt level and grass level, so it's called a lift come off of first base, you drop in three or four inches to a dirt level, and then you're running around second base, coming around third base, and you're, you're stepping up to a three or four, and it could be close, you know, we could, we might use it to our advantage and get somebody tripped and we get them out. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's still, I, I think in, in the future, laser grading and getting our infield raised to, to grass level would be something I would like to see. And this, and you know, I'll check on the status of um, environmental landscaping. But they do Clemson, they do Lander. They, uh, that's why I feel kind of confident they might be a state contract. But that's exactly what they do. So they might take a look at your field and be able to give us a quote. I mean, honestly, you know, moving forward, I, I feel like that that may be something that needs to be done every three years. Yeah. We've already talked about the shed at the softball field. Um, something that is very interesting, uh, most of you know uh, Coach Boyd and how, yeah. how outstanding that he is. Uh, in process of, of doing a, a home cross country course. And, you know, one, it's, it's revenue generating, but uh, to, to be able to see our cross country team run through the back and, and, and all of it is, is pretty neat. Yeah. You know, it's, pretty, it's a great idea. So um, that, that's something that logistic-wise is, is kind of getting worked out. Um, you know, we started the track and field team. Unbelievable job he's done. Uh, 
uh, over the past weekend had all kind of positives happen for, for our athletes. Um, and, and all you hear is positive remarks about what he's doing and what they're doing. And, you know, it very well may give some of our kids an opportunity to pursue it in, in college. So, um, just can't say enough about what he's doing. My knowledge, we haven't really provided him with supplies. You know, um, at, at some point, we need to, to revisit, you know, getting our track and fields the, the supplies. That they need. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, on the football side, um, I think I think the uprights re need to be re-scraped, repainted. Uh, we need we need to make it look a lot better than it does. Um, also, the scoreboard, I feel like repaint or a, a wrap uh, would be something that we we need to consider to, to update it. Um, I, I, I think a lot of people would agree that it, it's a little bit faded. Uh, football locker room lighting. I mentioned this. It's it's pretty old. Uh, we've tried to replace some bulbs down there, and those bulbs are getting to be obsolete, and it's very hard to find. It's the old T12 bulbs, um, so maybe updating to, to LED lighting, um, and that's a project that you know I feel like we well, the wiring down there is pretty crazy, but uh, we, we could try. We, Wrap them up. <laughs> That's right. It's, it, 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 don't don't volunteer now. <laughs> <don't need> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll take that. Um, and then the, the drainage. Uh, yeah. You know, I feel like going forward, we we, I mean, we know we've got an issue with drainage down there, water ponding on the on the sidewalk. Uh, I I feel like we should uh, maybe have all those catch basins uh, augered out, snaked yeah. out. Just to, to help out in some drainage areas. I'm going to move on to basketball. I'm moving too fast. Just to tell you. Uh, padding on, on, the, on the goals, the, the back goals. Uh, it, it's pretty worn. Uh, I, I think we could update that. Um, there's, there's, there's a big space if, if you're looking from the wall of the bathroom, boys' side, the bathrooms. If you're looking to the wall up here, we got a huge space on the left side that some kind of insignia, some kind of something would look really good there. Just, I think you like that idea as well, maybe? Uh, but, um, some kind of insignia, something on that, yeah. on that wall. Paint it, put on it, it's, you know, uh, and then Updating and rehanging our, our banners. You know, I, I think the, the history of wear shoulders is something we should be proud about. Uh, I, I think we should update everything and get it back up there so we can show off a little bit. Um, yeah, the stadium, I mean, the, in basketball, that is um, dedicated to Coach Johnson, right? Mm -hmm. Couldn't we have maybe something that we would highlight him um, that, that would um, sort of help remind us who that um, that that facility is dedicated to. Um, golf, we we um, hadn't supplied golf with a whole lot of stuff this year. Mainly got a lot. Of, we got a ton of clubs. We found a lot of balls, but I, I think moving forward, kind of this will kind of fall in that reoccurring uh, cost, but. I think we should at least buy balls for them. Uh, <laughs> um, so and not think, expect to find them. Well, it's, it's easy to lose, trust me, I've, I've lost my share. I've tried to play golf. And, uh, but I feel like kind of getting more routine to where we supply maybe 15, 20 dozen. And, and obviously the quality of the ball uh, dictates the pricing of the ball. So we wouldn't go out and buy probably one exit. And, you know, we, would, we would try to give them something something usable that is, is still good. Uh, on the soccer side, uh, the netting, uh, soccer nets, I don't think they're going to last a whole lot longer. Uh, but uh, I think at 
some point needs to be talked about about replacing that. Um, and then we, on the baseball side, we, we put a net that as you walk in to, to the stadium, we put a net that covers foul balls that come over and yeah. people standing at the concession stand. Um, I, I think it would probably be a good idea to figure out a more long-term solution of, of putting something on the back because I feel like that's really dangerous. Yeah. Uh, people standing in that area yeah. uh, right there where the overhang doesn't, doesn't uh, cover. Uh, but, but maybe maybe figuring out a way to either put a vertical vertical net on the back of the awning or just completely covering it. I, I'm not completely sold on a, on a horizontal net because I feel like it's going to droop it. And if we got any kind of leaves or anything that, that uh, get on, plus retrieving stuff off of it. So to me, I think a vertical net uh, is a little bit better of an idea. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to end on some positive Track and field, like I said, exceeding expectations, lots of positive feedback, and several, several standout athletes. Um, baseball team, uh, we're fortunate enough to be playing for the region championship this week uh, against our other Hornets right down the road. Um, so the scenario is if, if we beat them twice, we, we are region champions. If they beat us twice, they're region champions. If we split, uh, we play a third play-in game at a neutral site. So uh, any, any support would be great uh, this next week. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to, to make a statement. So. Um, Coach, are you playing at Dixie next week? We play at home tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. and yeah, tomorrow night at 6 here, and Friday at 6 at their place. <coughs> And then the third game, like I said, is a neutral site, and that's going to be a difficult thing to figure out because we're going in after this week, everybody's last week of the season. Like me personally, I've got four games already scheduled to try to get ready for playoffs. Uh, so finding a, a facility um, may be difficult. And, and also there's a, there's a rule that if you have to play a, a playoff game, or play in game is considered a play off <coughs> game, and no games can take place after that. So uh, there's a lot of figuring out to do if we split, but I don't intend to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this uh, baseball team over the past weekend, we had a couple of pretty big, big honors uh, at the region meeting. I'm going to keep them to myself, but uh, we, we, we had a player that really stands out uh, both on the field, off the field, and is super deserving of, of this award that he will be getting. Uh, but like I said, I, I don't want to disclose any information now, but something to be proud of. Something to be proud of. Um, soccer, super proud of them. Uh, one of the huge focuses for me moving forward is, is regaining the, the culture and the integrity of Ware Shoals High School, getting it where it should be and where it needs us to stay, uh, for us to be the standard. Um, and it starts with sportsmanship. And our soccer team got the sportsmanship award uh, voted from the region this past weekend. So I think they deserve uh, a lot of credit for that. Um, and then uh, baseball and softball both will we'll be hosting home playoff game. So that's huge. Um, I guess lastly, but, but not, not least, uh, Athletic Association has been tremendous. Uh, as of April 10th, uh, they have donated $24,833. Oh, so I think they deserve a ton of credit for what they do and what they stand for. And Super appreciative of, of everybody involved. So, that I think I'm done. I have one thing that a little bird just told me that I didn't realize at the beginning of the meeting. Um, coach Roper is the Region Coach of the Year for baseball. All right. <laughs> I would like to add another honor to that. Co 
Coach Roper and Coach Clamp both have attained their CDLs, and I had no clue how hard it is. When I pass a bus now, I salute, and I, I just thank you. I know it took a lot of time and a lot of effort, but I am forever indebted and very grateful. I think I speak for us both. We didn't know how hard it was. <laughs> Listen, I got to the second page and I thought, this is like a doctorate here. I mean, I, I just couldn't believe it. So I'm sorry for my ignorance, but I sure appreciate the time and effort. You don't have to wonder why there's a bus driver shortage. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Thank you, Coach, for all those updates and information. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Can, uh, can I, Coach, these are all so good. And as you look down, will you kind of in your mind and help us get some sort of a priority list on what you see immediately and then also into a list of yearly long things that we need to look at yearly or three years so we can get a perspective on that? Yes, That'd be great. A couple questions I got if you don't mind. Uh, I, I heard you say you meet with coaches. Are you getting a good response from them? Are you meeting them monthly or quarterly? or How, how is their response to meeting with you? I, I'll be honest, most of the time it's not meetings in person, it's, it's emails. I got you. But I mean, is that a good response, bad response, uh, mediocre? I mean, what? I don't have any complaints. Uh, you know, I, I, I think moving moving forward that there's, there's some stuff that needs to be put in place to, to, to implement. Um, and all be on the same page, playing the same team. Um, so that, as soon as I can get some time away from, from baseball, um, I, we're going to have a sit down, uh, and, and we're going to try to make sure everybody's on the same page, uh, so that it makes everybody's life a lot easier and smoother. Yeah. And then two other things, quick. The football shed down here. I've asked about it before. It, it's been tore up for almost well close to a year. I hope we can kind of get that repaired, just throwing that out there. And then the other thing, I was going to see if you could kind of give us an update. Maybe, it, maybe it may be Miss Ralph, not you, I'm not sure. Where the parking lot, I know it messed up like the soft, I'm at the baseball field, the, you know, it messed up some stuff down there. How's that? Or have they, has anything come of that? Or is it, yeah. they, have they fixed it or is it not fixed? Or? Yeah. So, so the, the, the asphalt company come back in and created a, a funnel because the problem was the, the excessive rain was pushing over. We added a little bit of a barrier for a shortcut fix. Yeah. All right, then all, all three of your, your questions is, is waiting on people. I mean, everything has been, I won't say scheduled because it hasn't been done, but it's been, it's been asked to, to be done. Okay. Uh, we, we've got a guy that's gonna come in and redo the bank. We've got a guy that's going to redo the shed. Um, hoping it is sooner than later. Um, and, you know, but it, it has been talked about. It's the mercy of waiting on somebody. I got you. I was just curious because I know the football shed is the big thing. I couldn't believe it's still tore up when I passed last month. I was like, I thought it's been fixed. I was like, that's unbelievable. But thank you. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Again, Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, now we will move on down uh, to our next item in uh, budget workshop and district finance team, wherever you may be. She's one of the team. Yeah. I will. That's right. <laughs> um, I'm talking tonight because Ms. Wales has to do the notes, and so um, most of y'all know who I am. I'm Sean Davenport. Uh, <coughs> I'm a member of the finance department here at the district and I work with accounts payable and I've been trained the last couple of years learning the budget prep process. Um, Ms. Wells is my boss and she's the finance office manager but since she has to do the scribe for the um, board meeting I um, was asked to uh, do the talking tonight. So, <laughs> so um, Dr. Bryce asked me to walk through the process where we create the new budget each year and the timeline of how we do everything and when we do all the stuff. So this is the beginning process for the next year's fiscal year budget for 24-25. So um, the fiscal year starts July 1st, but the process for creating the budget starts a lot earlier than that. We actually start in February. It's a year, really a year-long thing, like we were not ever 
not working on budget, to be honest. It's, it's all been going throughout the year. But um, we roll over this year's fiscal year budget into next year. So um, in February, we roll over the previous year's budget, and that's our starting point. Um, the first step in the new budget is always to update our staff salary profiles. If you look at the graph here, our staff salaries make up 85% of our overall general fund projected budget. Each staff member has um, a salary po profile and I, in the program, the computer program that we use. And that um, profile includes information that allows us to increase the salary based on the state's projected requirement for next year. They're telling us that we're going to probably get, a, you know, teachers a $2,500 raise or possibly, a, you know, whatever the raise is projected to be for this coming year or if we're having a, a raise for the base minimum for the projected for the next year. So we have to go in and change, make those changes in those salary profiles. We um, use those profiles to update the year steps. We um, add any additional insurance costs. So if people have changed their insurance throughout the year, if they've had babies or got married, we can do that in those profiles in the budget prep program that we use. Um, we update fringe costs. All that happens in those profiles. Um, using all those steps gives us a reasonable projection for salaries. Personnel changes alter those final numbers since it's based on current staff and so it can change based on if we have changes in staff. So 85% is our projected salary and benefits cost of the overall general fund. Yeah. So, um, so we use a line item style budget. This style uses historical data to update the budget based on our previous year's expenditures and trends. Um, it's really easy for us to break them down because we can look at um, the fund, which we're looking at our general fund here, and then the function, so our next function. So this is showing maintenance of 254. That's the second line of numbers is a 254. So this is showing several maintenance budgets. Um, and then the object and then we can break them down into an individual line and then create reports from that. This is a sample of a five-year comparison report. This report shows the original budget amount and then the actual amount that was spent on each line item over a five-year period. And each line is a specific budget and then the location for that budget allotment. Um, this report should create it, this specific report is, this is a screenshot of a small part of a very large yeah. report. Um, so this report's created and is distributed out to all of the members of the team and they get a copy of it in or late February, early March. Um, and then as soon as we start the new budget season prep, our budget prep season. So then the team looks over this report and the next page, which I'll get that one in a second. And um, as soon as we start making the plans for the new um, for the new budget, because we'll use this to to look at any kind of trends. If we didn't use all the money, or if we went over on a specific line, to kind of decide, um, do we need that? At, if it's not being used at all, then we'll maybe we can get rid of it. Let's look back and see what did we use it for in the past. Maybe we don't need it anymore. Um, or if we're going significantly over budget, then let's look at why we went over budget and do we need to increase that budget. So, um, sorry. So the next slide also shows a, uh, this is one of the spreadsheets that we use. So this is actually only three years instead of um, the five year budget report, but this is a screenshot of the spreadsheet that we use that shows trends that we have for like required operating expenses. Yeah. So we take into consideration the data that we collect from a trend that we have going, any current expenditures that we've already paid, which will be showed in the last column, and then any extenuating circumstances. So we're looking at maintenance 
energy costs, gas on this particular page, um, a water leak at the primary school or installing new HVAC systems could determine, make change. We take those things into consideration and realize that they may have an impact on why that line item might look like it's going to be over, but it might not actually be something we need to adjust because if there was a leak, then we might not need more in that line next year. So we take all those things into consideration when we're looking at deciding what we need to budget for the next year. So. Um, this is one of the main things that we look at when we're looking at the required expenses, and so we use this for determining the final number for utilities and the required services like trash services and things like that. That's that 3.5% that was on that first page that you looked at. Safety, maintenance, those are those required expenses that we have to calculate in to that. So then the last part that we're looking at is that 11.4% that was on that original diagram. And those funds have to be kind of distributed out into the remaining areas. So we look at historical data and our di district strategic plan to figure out what else we can use that, what, ne what that money needs to be used for um, to meet student needs, uh, the recruitment and retention for high quality teachers, the technology that we need to yeah. refurbish or what needs to, need to be filled as far as the technology department goes, uh, board-proof priorities, and then we look at meeting with administration to figure out what departments have needs based on, yeah. like I said earlier, things that may be over budget, things that didn't necessarily get used, and that kind of thing. Throughout the year, like I said, this is something we're working on all the time, so throughout the year, we get notes, emails, Dr. Sprouse, Dr. Crockett send things to Lincoln and I throughout the year saying, you know, write this down, make sure we got this in our budget for file for next year. And we both have binders and we're getting our binders so that we, when it comes February and we're looking at these spreadsheets, that we have that note in there. Some of the things that we look at are, you know, substitute teacher costs, like if that's something that was really over budget this year. Are we looking at long-term subs for next year? We might need to add something for that line item. Um, legal services was some of the things that we had to take into consideration. Uh, we bought several new AEDs this past year, and so we're having to add some money into those budgets to pay for all the batteries for those new AEDs. Those are some of the things that we had notes on looking into this coming year's budget. Um, after we've gotten a lot of the expenditure notes and things in place and we've gotten them into our spreadsheet and we've kind of figured what we're looking at as far as those expenditures and then we look at our um, projected revenues before we can finalize the budget and Dr. Sprouse is the one that works on where the revenues are coming in from the state the local county budgets and things like that and that's when we have to kind of figure out where we can balance and so it's all so amazing because you're also so. dealing with inflation at 3.5 percent mm -hmm. <laughs> so and uh, praying that it doesn't go any higher yeah, it's and so that that I don't envy your your team at all <laughs> trying to squeeze but but that it's an enormous amount of work and your accounting system is certainly um, well done you know and is the 11.4 is that insurance um, insurance for like, property insurance right. and stuff is is included in that eleven point four. Okay, I just I just heard it had gone up to um, I, I, they used eleven over eleven percent. So when I just now, saw eleven point four, staff I, I thought, insurance mm -hmm. is included in that eighty five percent. Okay, now but property insurance for the buildings Buildings. is included in the um, variable insurance in that eleven point four. Now when we get that statement like from the um, you know, from the county, what are the components of that that make up the, the bottom line figure, six million? What makes up our district yeah, budget? Right. I mean, I know that I, I get this statement, and I look at it, and it's got a... Oh, you're talking about the fund balance. fund balance. It's three tiers. What, can you tell me? I don't know what that means. Okay, well, 
tiers are those are revenues that yeah. come from the state. And right. so we have um, when Act 388 took place in 2008, I believe it was. Then um, the state replaces some of the property taxes that were used to go when they relieve you. property owners of their six um, percent. Then we were given replacement funds for that. <clears throat> Got you. So I wonder how that, that worked. Yeah, all that is related to Act 388. And there's three tiers. One of them is a, well, two of them are fixed, and then that tier three is yes. variable. So those go into our revenues. Right. Yeah. So we add that. Um, in addition to the county appropriation, which is based on millage, right? And we haven't increased millage in, I don't know, not, not since I've been on here. Uh, yeah, it's but been probably know, eight, you, ten years. You, you've been real forthright with all that, and you you made a statement that I, and it, I love to learn, and I guess that's why I ask all these questions. But even if you raised your millage, we can't go higher than what? Um, like, it it was, it. isn't it something like eleven dollars or? It's based on consumer price in, uh, index yeah, and the low. percent population. So, um, it, consumer price index increased 12 percent from calendar year uh, 22 to 23, and then the estimated population of our district decreased 0.56. But they they always hold us um, yeah. at zero for that. So our um, our cap is 4.2. 4.12 percent on the millage rate. So, and again, if we increase millage rate four percent, we we'll probably get what two dollars and fifty-five cents. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's not going to generate anything. It doesn't no, do it's that. just nothing. Yeah. Everybody yeah. say raise the millage, mm -hmm. and we went, well, I think I can do it with one hand. Yeah. You know, yeah, because our our um, industrial tax base is so low, our um, you know the value of a, a mill is very low. low. Now, of course, the county mill is high, yeah. which generates some of the county appropriation. Um, and then, you know, we do get some fee in lieu of tax, you know, when they right. recruit industry into the area sometimes instead of it re requiring the industries to pay the tax levy, you know, they'll say, well, well, you can just pay this fee. Or you don't have to pay anything for <laughs> 10 years and then we'll, you know. Yeah. So that really does kind of strap districts in a way to, um, it sure does. you know. But, and then they have the multi-county uh, industrial parks. That was another thing that has happened to districts that's really eroded some of the funding. But into our revenue stream as are the county appropriations, that's the millage, um, education funding, which is from the state, that's right. and then the tier funds at 388. Those are the three components which you see here um, on your handout. I'm that's not sure right. that, yeah. yeah, the first three figures there. These are the projections based on the House budget. Now, yeah. you know the House does their budget, the Senate does their budget, and then they have to have conference committee because they don't ever agree. Yeah. So, um, you know, the House passed a so, uh, level of funding, and the Senate recently came in and reduced that funding by $30 million, so it'll have to go to conference committee. But uh, from what I've read, the teacher salary, they agreed on that, so we at least can, um, uh, we've included that into our budget. So um, here, just I've added some budget notes. This is the figure that I sent to the county. We have to have it to the county well in advance of the yeah. time that we even approve it here. That's right. Um, so this is an estimate, and it can be, you know, uh, tinkered with um, as we learn what the actual budget figures are. Um, a lot of times, that's not even until until June but until we find out what's actually going to be. But. One of the things I don't understand, and I've asked Dr. Crockett, you've been so patient with my questions, but on that state. New state teacher allocation. They're going to fund first year teachers, no experience. I mean, if that, they're, they're, uh, it's my understanding, now you correct me if I'm wrong, they're, they're agreed on this, that they're going to get, um, I guess it's uh, raised up to a minimum of 4,700, uh, 47,000. And then on I got so confused in this because then if you go to the next pay scale, then it, they get a percentage increase, but the further down the road you get, it just gets, I mean, it's like herding cats. It, it shoots off this way and that way, and I just, I'm, I'm fascinated and somewhat horrified because it seems very haphazard. Well, when it's done as a percentage, you can see how it would differ because yeah. the percentage of a higher salary is a lot more than a yeah. Percent, which is why y'all wisely chose last year to increase support staff salaries by a standard amount. 
you increased it, I believe, by fifteen hundred dollars. Last year, I think we did a thousand. Year, 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 year four was, was fifty. Okay. Okay. Actually, year four was two thousand. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So that is a wise. That's like a you know everybody gets the same. It's, it's more it's equitable fair. that way. Yep, that's right. Um, and so that's one thing that we yeah. do need you to help us with here, um, which is highlighted at the bottom. Yeah. Um, do you want to give us classified staff raise? Which absolutely, I would say so. Uh, I would, and yeah. then, you know, I absolutely by how much? And then I said, so if you vote on to do that, then we've already created um, some uh, scenarios like we did last year. I've updated. Well, Miss Wells is updated, and so you can um, <coughs> take this and ponder it for next time, or you, you know, based on what we find out from the state. There's, pl there's plenty of time. We can do this next month, but that's something just to yeah. ponder from here to there. But, um, <coughs> so we'll, we'll keep working on it. We just wanted, just wanted you to know as to how the budget is built. Yeah. And then, of course, every month you get a budget report. Right. Um, at the end, it's the, we used to call it finance review, but just so there's no confusion, I put monthly budget review this time so that um, you see what we're spending, you see how much is being spent, and if it's not here, you can always look online. I don't know if we have an active link there. Yes, it is online. Here, um, there's yeah. tons of information. Credit card statements are there. Everything is there. We're transparent. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, and if there's if something that's not there and you want to know, all you have to do is pick up the phone and call. Because um, you know, it's taxpayer money. Yeah. And we want to be very forthright and let y'all know how much we have on a monthly basis and what's going on. Well, so, nobody can certainly say that isn't the case. Right. So I mean, the um, looking at this month's budget report, at the very end, it tells you the ideal remaining percent for this particular time of year, and it says 25%. Well, we're at 24%. Why are we less than, than the ideal? Because we've had some unbudgeted expenses. We've had some pretty major unbudgeted expenses throughout the year, but there were things that needed to be done and that you all voted to do. So, um, and then if it ends up being in the negative, what do we rely on? We rely on our credit balance, which is a savings account, which is, um, you know, a great rainy day account. And I tell you what, in the three recessions that we've had since I've been superintendent, we we never laid anybody off. I mean, we might have had to curtail some programs especially the recession of the 2008 and 9, that was really bad. That was horrible. Um, but we didn't have to, we never docked salaries or froze salaries. Some districts had to freeze salaries. We never did that, and we, we didn't have to yeah. do any laying off of teachers because we've been very careful to keep that healthy Imagine fund balance. Money. Yeah, but it's to the point now where when we have needs such as the, the ones that we've talked about, the, upgrading athletic facilities. We've gotten the major infrastructure things taken care of. Right. Roofs, um, HVAC, we've got all that taken care of. Maybe. And so it's time to start looking at some, not necessarily needs, but some wants. Let's get, you know, yeah. look and get some of those things out of the way. Because this month, our fund balance is $6,044,187. Now, you also were provided with a big old chart. Remember? Let's put this just in your notebook. Yeah. This chart is the fund balance of every district in the state. The legislature is look, looking at these fund balances. And as a matter of fact, there's a bill on the um, that's being considered now to make this a part of that dashboard, the financial yeah. dashboard, which is available for all districts in the state. Now it's wonderful as a dashboard, and you can just take a look at, at the district's finances. That's in addition to, that's a lot more detail than what you're going to see here. These are just like expenditure reports. But all that information is out there. And you can see that as a percentage of your general fund budget, we're like second in the state. You know. So, yes, we do have a large fund balance. We've kept it for a reason um, in being just conservative. But um, now we're, we're doing a lot of things with it, which is great. We've spent well over a million dollars in the last year or two supplementing our ESSERS money so we could do all of these in infrastructure projects. So um, you have all of that, and you also have the fact sheets as to why districts have fund balances. And you know you can't do without, I mean, you wouldn't go without 
an individual savings account, right? I mean, you have to have a little bit of a rainy day fund in case the washing confused. machine goes yeah. out or something. I think what people got confused, and I've been called at home and I've been stopped on the street. Why can't we do this? We've got 4.5 or 5.5 million dollars. And the words that come after that are to play with. And all I've said is, well, what's your house worth? And they said, what do you mean? I said, if you had to sell it today, what's your house worth? And they'll tell me. I said, well, I'd like it tomorrow. And they'll say, well, you, you, you can't have it tomorrow. <laughs> I said, that's right. You sent us a great thing. A fund balance is not cash. It is what we can rely on and pull, but we've got a healthy fund balance, and we've got a good budget. I don't know why, Wimpy, you're a good person, and your team are wonderful people. I pull my hair out. <laughs> because you think you have the figures, you know, um, and then they change one thing and it changes it all the way across the board. It isn't just one area. So I know we're still waiting on figures, but I'm very optimistic that we're going to get really good figures coming out of it. And um, thank you. Thank you, Wimpy. Thank you, Sean. And thank you, Don Perkle, who is not here. Um. As far as obligated mm -hmm. obligations of this uh, fund balance, y'all voted to do the middle school paving project. Yeah. And the last estimate that we had, I mean, it'll be different from this, but it was $371,363. That was yeah. just a, a ballpark. Yeah. And then um, fire alarm is the only other outstanding thing that we owe, and we still have a few things to there. But the sixteen thousand three hundred four dollars is what's left on that fire fire alarm project. HVAC's been paid for, roofing's been paid for with Essers and with um, fund balance money. So um, we're in good shape as far as that goes. And that was an amazingly healthy restricted balance. Um, I mean, I thank you. It takes a lot of effort. Yes, ma'am. Sean, were you finished? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. I will not much. call with one question tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wim. Um, we will move on now to our um, action items. And the first one is uh, the Play Safe um, Athletic Trainer. Just, I know we've got a lot of information about that. Does anybody have any other questions? Well, I, I really wanted to speak to it again, and I, I'm 150% behind it. It's a very, very well-known, you know, established program that everybody, I mean, Greenwood 50 has spoken to me, Abbeville has spoken to me. Um, I'm not sure there's a district that they don't deal with. Does 96 use, they, yes, yeah, I thought 96 was on there too. So, I'd like to make a motion that we move forward with the play safe um, organization to secure a trainer full time for West Shoals 51. Okay. We, we have a motion on the floor. And I'm sorry, I just wanted to say one may not be available. Oh, we have a very small right. class we, graduating we, this year. They just put the master's degree in Carter. No, that's so right. I just ask that you make a motion to include, include 35000 in the budget for so the that proposal. everyone is available that we could. And I appreciate the correction. Um, I think, let's see if I have to make a friendly, a friendly motion. I can, I can do it without reading it. I'd like to um, amend my original motion to allow $35,000 in the budget and some residual for additional um, supplies. Uh, and I'd like the proposal process to begin, which you notify them that we, we begin our paperwork. And I'm very, I'm just, I couldn't agree more. There's only, it's a small class, but I'm going to remain hopeful. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. Uh, do we have a second? Second. All right. Uh, any other discussion? I think we've got plenty of information on that. To, uh, we'll do the one we know if we can get one for next year. Just curious, I mean. We just have to get on the list. list. And they, they, do the hiring, start the hiring process, looking for. Will you let us know if we get one? Oh, yes. Oh, you. We'll, we'll hear it if we get one. Thank I you. promise. Every Thank <laughs> you. All right, we have a motion and a second for the Play Safe, play safe Athletic Trainer. Uh, do we know of discussion? 
All in favor of approving that motion, please raise your right hand. Adjust the budget. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next up on our action items is the softball field replacement of lights and poles. And of course, we heard some information about that. Does anybody have any questions <coughs> or comments about, any more comments about that? I'd like to see the lights and the play of field at the same motion. And I would like, me personally, I'd like to see three quotes, even though I know there's just the one. I'd like to see some companies from South Carolina included. And I guess we need individual motions. Am I correct, sir? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the quote on the lights and that we also include the softball field of play. And, uh, okay. Uh, there's a motion on the floor to have the softball field lights and poles replaced and also to uh, get a get some quotes on the um, field of play. It wasn't in my motion. Okay. That would be a separate motion, would it not? I mean, she says you gotta have three quotes or okay. so if they're not state certified, but I mean. Oh. Yeah, on her procurement, we talked about it. Uh, she mentioned it earlier that oh. we need three quotes right. on the field of play. That's right. May or may not, mm -hmm. okay. depending on private state contract. Depending on, yeah, depending on state contract. And I'll call. And I, I, I'm just, I guess I'm overconfident since they do Clemson and Lander and several universities, but I'll call when I get home. Um, so my motion now will take another turn that we will um, secure three uh, information to see if they are a state uh, approved contract and we will uh, adjust accordingly. So we have a motion on the floor to have the lights and poles replaced and to also get, uh, find out information regarding the quote to see if the, they're on the state contract for the field of play. Well, I want to do more than that. I want to accept this bid of 13000 13, If it needs to be adjusted, we can adjust it at the next meeting. But what, the field of play, you got to find out that. What they voting on the lights. Okay. Yeah, again, what I'm going back to, we find out about the state contract. So we can't vote on it until we know about the state contract. Okay. As far as the field of play, lights were good, but no field of play. We still have to get information. You could do a not to exceed and thirteen. I mean, if that's the and not to exceed thirteen, whatever your quote is. Uh, not to exceed thirteen uh, four eighty. That makes sense. Okay, since we're talking through, I know this is the middle of a motion. Let me just tell you. That I'm not quite sure. Are you accepting the $145,000 quote on the softball field lights? Yes. As, as what in conjunction with this feat that slows everything down. That motion is a freestanding motion failed. And I know Robert's Rules of Order, and I know what we have to do to bring it back. But my thinking was if they're put together, you now have a different presentation of that motion. So both of them are safety issues. And if we would question, well, you went back on the lights, but they failed, I'm in good conscience can say we, we have packaged it differently. Right. It's, okay. it's not so, a free, freestanding motion. Yeah. So it would be this quote is what we're saying, plus the? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, is that agreeable? Uh, that's great with me because we're going to lose out on the discount with being with Oconee if we don't. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they put us with that bigger district so we could get that quantity discount with the um, mobilization and everything. That was like cut rate. And we need less poles and we get more lights. I mean, I just wanted to see what was out there. And you're within three to five thousand of some really good companies, and I think it's. Um, I'm willing to sacrifice that to move forward. 
But does this that don't guarantee the field to play for it? I mean, it don't guarantee it if they're not a state contractor. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna repeat your motion. You can correct me if I'm wrong with your motion here. There's a motion on the floor to approve the $145,000 replacement of lights and poles for the softball field. Absolutely. And also a motion for the softball field of play not to exceed $13,480 in expenditures. That is correct, sir. Okay. And that might be a little bit high. It could be thirteen four. I'm not sure. Right. That's infield, right? Yeah. That, and that's the part. That's the infield. The bases are out of alignment. We need that. Um, drainage ditch, and we need them to aerate that back field. And they'll that's do all. The they'll do all of that. Right? You mean the whole field of play? Yeah, you're talking. Not about just the, like the whole infield. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. okay. Motion is. I'm sorry. I think the outfield was a separate. Separate. Yeah. Come out. Uh, He's got remove existing turf aprons. Um, first and second base. I mean, he talks about that. Install 75 tons of uh, grass like ball bar clay. So, I mean, I, I think that's more than just that small little area. Uh, provide laser grade infield uh, to uh, one fourth consistency. Provide and install new bases, hardware, uh, box blocks. Provide and install 40 bags of turf MVP. So, um, I think that he, that's what he has put is addressing <coughs> the immediate action, safety, and liability. And, and that's a good question that, that you asked. Uh, it says, renovate a laser grade existing infield per quote provided um, on the December, and the, uh, he, 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 li he lists it here, which I'll leave that with you. And then, yeah, that that's, that's just the infield. The outfield is gonna be at an additional expense. Okay, he's so got be for, um, outfield laser. It, it, I mean, he's not gonna laser the out, outdoor. You can, um, I live on a farm. You can get a backhoe and <laughs> uh, turn that soil up. That that you know, uh, but what I'm concerned with the pooling that takes place on that field. And one coach told me if you dug it up, it's got glass in it. So I went yow. You know, let's let's well, use we'll your hair up. We'll have time to get more information. Yeah. But I didn't want to go up because it is an addition. I mean, if you you can get a an estimate of that's higher a turf maintenance program and that type of thing. But I'm just going over the the original things that he's listed under liability and safety. Um, does anybody need me to repeat that motion? <laughs> Who's on third base? If uh, if not, do we have a second for that motion? I'll second that motion that we um, replace the softball field, lights and poles for 145000 and to uh, do the field of play not exceeding $13,480. I'm with you. All in favor of approving that project, please raise your right hand. All right, thank you all very much. And classified salary yes. is our last uh, right. item. I just need um, guidance, a yes or a no. <laughs> and I think y'all have already certainly given your uh, blessing to give a, uh, an increase. And then we can do, um, if you would like for us to do the um, money amount, the, uh, you have the, the figures already. We've got 500, 1,000, and 1,500. I would, I would like to see uh, the numbers with, with both the higher amounts. If you could get those back to us, that's me. I don't know about the I'd, rest of the board. I'd like to see that, the translation. Uh, but no, no less than 1,000. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Get the numbers on the 1,000 and 1,500 for classified. Okay. What was on the, let me see what I did. You have the amount for yeah, person. Yeah, I just didn't know the, the total. Oh, okay. You know, like for the budget. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah. This one has no, that was last year. Okay, yeah, we'll get that to you next time. So we can hold off on that until our next uh, mm -hmm. meeting if everybody's good with that. Um, and uh, up next is our uh, monthly budget review. Uh, we talked about that um, yeah. at length here just a little bit ago.
But if anybody has any questions, you can certainly call the finance team, Ms. Sprouse, uh, Dan, whoever you need to talk to, they'll be glad to answer your questions. And like Ms. Sprouse was showing to earlier, uh, also uh, have a link there online that uh, you can check and see with things. Um, and if ever there's something on there that's like not up to date, sometimes on our website that we may overlook something like, you know, <coughs> something, maybe something that's left there from last year or whatever. But we, we yeah. try yeah. to maintain it. I mean, it's just that we don't have anybody that does that. Yeah. And, uh, and that Michael's, Michael's got some stuff up there now. So. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, we'll probably call some of this because there's more years on there right. than we actually need to, but if anybody ever wants to look back, you know, we have all this um, yeah. housed in the cloud probably yeah. or something, or either in Bang or somewhere. So, um, so that's, uh, yeah. all that stuff is there. Um, and then you got your board creek budgets from the last couple of years. Um, and then the millage chart there shows yeah. the um, where all the different tax dollars come from, um, you know, like your automobile and your farmlands and all that stuff. So it's a very um, pretty detailed kind of list there. So, um, yeah. It also gives you what the value of the mill is. Yeah. You um, ever want some sleeping beds? Yeah. <laughs> but before we adjourn, I just want to say thank you to Mr. Dickerson, Ms. Tyre, Ms. Webb. We almost had the finish line for this school year, so thank you for all your hard work and uh, your teachers' hard work, if you would, on behalf of the board, pass that along um, for us, please. Uh, appreciate everybody's hard work that they do, and uh, another successful school year, and we're coming to the finish line here. So, thank you all so much for what you do for our district. Um, with that, um, I'll make a motion that we uh, adjourn tonight's meeting, and I'll ask for a second. Second. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. No discussion. I don't believe so. All in favor of adjourning tonight's meeting, please raise your right hand. All right, thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. Have a great night.